that'll be the fade in to the intro. Okay, that so works. basically from this point, we just go, hey guys, welcome to Square Table Weekly. This is uh, a very nerdy podcast, uh, talking about video games, and that's pretty much it. But we'll probably reference a lot of other nerdy stuff, and maybe some not nerdy stuff, just because we all have various interests. Um, my name is Matt. I'm Nick. And I'm Trenton. And we will be your hosts forever <laughs> until one of us dies. And then we <laughs> may continue, may bring in another person. Uh, we're going to start with table topics, which, you know, just to start a conversation going, because otherwise we'll probably just ramble. We'll probably still ramble, but... When do we not um, ramble? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, here's, okay. here's a question. Uh, do you have a regular game night? We, in fact, I do. It's Tuesday nights with Nick and Trenton. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah basically. Um, we say regular because we plan to do it. It doesn't always work out just because well, sometimes we have other plans or something comes up. And But, but more recently, we have I been able to, to nail yeah, it pretty get, consistently. I, I like to get angry at these guys when they don't show up just for fun. It's just... It's just well, my idea. School of a good is time. important. Okay, I have to say that school was important. <laughs> yes, school is so. very important for you. We don't. Yeah, that was um, that was my bad. That, that's always been a thing where but it's ever, been like, if so you're getting educated, one hundred percent, I support that. Yeah, do your thing. Study. <laughs> ever since your internet got fixed, oh, oh, yeah. you got your own that's internet. True. I should say that more more specifically, <laughs> we've been able to consistently do stuff without major dropout <laughs> problems. Where we're like, let's play for like ten minutes, and then and then oh, he's gone. Oh, I have to go restart my internet. <laughs> Yeah. But. It was either I have to go reset my internet or just you disappeared because your internet just cut off. And then you get text message be like, yeah, my internet cut out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there are a long, good there are long Tuesday yeah. nights where it was just like at the lobby over and over again. Yeah. And we're but like, now we don't have okay, that Okay, it's been consistent. We're in the lobby and now, oh, we're in the game. Okay, we're going, we're going. Three minutes later, gone. Just out yeah. of there. Just because, oh, man. I was afraid to make some significant choices in like our, our game of... Uh, Divinity Original Sin. Yeah. It's like if we, if he's not, oh, he's not gonna experience this if he's not here. So. Yeah, it's just uh, like, and he's gone. oh, <laughs> yeah. choose this dialogue up. He's gone. Okay, well, <laughs> now he's missing out on all of this yeah. stuff. Oh well. So you guys, not that I necessarily care about you guys missing out on stuff, because I tend to run ahead and just be like, I want all this stuff, so I'm going to do as much as I can. Yeah, you <laughs> like, definitely you do also, that. You tend to run ahead, but you, you forget Nick also, for some reason, is the like danger magnet. He like oh, does 100% stuff. True. He does okay. stuff, and then all of a sudden he's in a fight. He's like, guys, can you come and help me? Okay, that <laughs> one fight was Matt's fault because no, the guy, guy was. Being racist. Okay, I wasn't. I wasn't talking <laughs> that about. I had to kill. Oh, him. like the other ones where I just walk ahead. All yes. of a sudden, it's like, oh, well, dialogue. Okay. It, it Wait, tends what? to be. Okay, click, click, click. Oh, we both we both run ahead. You run ahead just because you're interested in seeing what's next. I think. I want to try like, to get to loot before you guys because I never get any loot. <laughs> you're like, what's happening? And then you run into the enemy or a conversation, and then you're stuck in that. Whereas yeah. I run ahead because I've played Divinity a little bit. We played. I played a little bit more than you. Yeah, it's yeah. actually our game that's the farthest ahead, so... So we're um, probably about the same. Yeah, we, we, we've seen the same amount of story. Yeah, it's just um, it's just really funny, because... Yeah. Like, and I run ahead because I know what's coming, so I'm yeah. just like, ooh, I'm excited to do this. I'm not excited to show you guys, I'm excited to experience it again for myself. <laughs> and Nick just, just <laughs> happens to consistently trigger like yeah. dangerous moments but that's yeah. because he hasn't played the game like i've played the game so, <laughs> so i you... know where they are so i just avoid them until you guys until nick triggers them accidentally and then i'll run but... back and help you guys <laughs> then again i don't i don't really play <laughs> games like that where it's like okay you watch this point it's like okay there's another cutscene. a lot of the games i play is like hey just keep walking oh look there's a guy who has a quest okay there you go so i'm used to more like okay we'll go to the quest guy and nothing else happens around you but then all of a sudden it's like what games are like that? I was gonna say Far Cry, but no. I actually. feel like all the games, all most games are. Well, I, I feel like Pokemon. There we go. With, with a lot of the games, no, actually, no. a lot of the games you play, obviously, other than Pokemon, is that the combat and the world exploration are more seamless. Like Pokemon, obviously, there's a transition and then you're in combat. Yeah. And Divinity, it's like. No, oh, now you're now you're in then. a combat, and it's a completely different experience than just running around the world. Yeah. So I think that's maybe why it throws you off a little bit. Yeah. 
It's because you can't, like, you can just run away, but you have to, like, wait for your turn to run away. It's not just, like, everybody's going at once. Yeah, it's not real it's, time. It's, it's. I think it's the, the, the uh, turn-based strategy mm-hmm. type thing. Because, like, thinking about it, like, yeah, going back to Far Cry, yeah, that happens where you'll you'll be in a, a fight, but it's like, okay, yeah, you're I can go hide objective. in a bush, yeah, you and can... I'll be fine. Or I can just shoot them, headshot, mm-hmm. there we go, I'm done. Yeah. I don't have to wait for my turn to come around again. So, I don't know, I think that's... Thing. Yeah, and that's like most of your games that you play yeah. tends to be in real time and not turn based. So that's why. Yeah, that's in my mind why it yeah. <laughs> throws you off so much in this a game that you never played before. So yeah. Quickly, another thing about <clears throat> let's say like the question about regular gaming nights. We we talked about our regular gaming night as a group. What about any other nights you have regular that you? Um, I mean, every other to... night is like a gaming night for me. Kind of oh, I say every other, yeah. I mean like all of them, not like alternating. Because I don't do a lot other than go to work and come home. <laughs> so I tend to just game all the time just because it's where I find joy as well as music. But it's music yeah. has to be, a, I feel I feel I have to be a bit more inspired for music. and then So I'm a bit more picky about when I play music rather than video games where I just sit down and be like, <laughs> nice. What about you, Nick? It, it's kind of the same for me where it's like basically any free time I have, where I'm not spending time with family or writing something, it's like, okay, let's go play video games. Because, well, I'm a completionist. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's like, okay, let's get all these achievements. And then it's like, okay, then I'm done for a little bit. But then I, I do kind of have, I don't know, I, I wouldn't call it like regular. It's maybe like once a month where it's like, I'll play like small party games with my girlfriend. So like, like Jackbox? Not so much Jackbox, like Overcooked and like, okay. like co-op, like couch co-op games. Like we'll do that like every once in a while hmm. or I'll be editing some YouTube videos that I'm brag doing. about having a girlfriend <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> no, it's all good man <laughs> but going back like uh, sometimes instead of that it'll be like it'll kind of be like a gaming day but it'll be like more so I'm editing my YouTube videos and then she'll play uh, some sort of platformer game like Crash Bandicoot because apparently those are the only games she's really good at so. not a sponsor no Nick's girlfriend is not a sponsor of this podcast. I don't even think she's <laughs> going to listen to these. So well, that's disappointing. Uh, for me, like if yeah. I can, I'll I'll ga- game like most nights if I can. But if I can't, usually I try to save like what was normally like my Saturdays for more gamings. But sometimes Sunday evenings too. too. Mm-hmm. Like those would be more, like if I could say more specifically, those would be some of my times that I try to go for. On that, that's that's the question. So should we move on to our next section? Well, I mean, or do we want to do another question? Because honestly, we don't have this podcast thing figured out. Because again, this is our first episode. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, we so, want to be pretty casual. Yeah, yeah, about this. Nothing really <coughs> insane. Excuse me. I mean, um, we could. I don't know. We have a few things planned. Hopefully it takes a while. Plan. Not too long, because who uh, wants to listen to a nine-hour podcast? Nine hours would be a little Honestly, too much. I would. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I have too much anime to watch to listen to a nine-hour podcast. So. I have definitely listened to four-hour-plus podcasts. I've definitely listened to podcasts uh, for nine hours, but it tends to be multiple episodes. <laughs> I've listened to a single episode that was over four hours. Why? Because he listens to Critical Role. Oh, that <laughs> explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like every single episode is over four hours, I think. Or most no, of them. They're like between two and a half and four and a half. Really? I feel like. Wow. Oh. I feel like a lot of the ones I. Like they start off with a lot longer ones. Do they get yeah, shorter as you go? Because so, like, I, no, I think it depends on. I think it depends on like uh, their schedule. Sometimes they'll uh, mm-hmm. have like a few weeks of shorter ones because they don't have as much time. Right. Because they're busy working. But no, it it fluctuates. Sometimes they have like a really big episode because a lot of big things are happening in their story, which is yeah, really cool. And they don't want to stop, cut out. I I can for themselves, that, yeah. but also probably for their listeners. <laughs> I definitely understand that. Coming from recording like YouTube videos, spe- specifically like gaming YouTube videos, it's kind of the same way. Where it's like, okay, I'm doing this the certain game and I'm doing this thing but it's like I'm in the middle of like I don't know like let's let's say Starcraft 2 which I haven't recorded but 
I'm in the middle of a fight and it's like, oh, I'm already, I'm hitting like a 20 minute mark. It's like, okay, we'll go a little bit longer, finish the battle and be like, okay, I'm done. Or it's like, okay, I know maybe there's a part where it's like, I know there's going to be a battle, but it's like, I'm getting close to it. It's like, okay, this will be shorter. And sometimes it'll just be like that. We'll be like, oh, okay, we'll have like a, like a six minute episode for like a few days. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, 25 minutes of me just rambling on and getting my butt kicked. <laughs> Because that happens a lot when I try to play against people. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's StarCraft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never played StarCraft, so I can't really be like, yeah, I get it. So. Because I don't. But I've yeah. heard good things about it. Yeah. Mostly from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much exclusively from you, because I don't actively seek out StarCraft news. Um, <laughs> Just try watching the World Championships. <laughs> that would have been a great segue, but... Oh, well. I want a segue. I'll buy you one when I'm a billionaire. Not before. I okay. have to be a billionaire. Okay. Which will take a long time. <laughs> May never happen. Like a so, billion dollars or a billion cents? A billionaire. Oh. Okay. So once you get to at least one billion dollars. Once I get not one billion breaths of air. <laughs> I think you've, you've been there. A billion? Well, if you think about what... No, no. he's not even come close. No one... Like... Come. That's a lot of... Well, what is it? It's like you breathe every, like, 30 seconds, right? Yeah, so... Roughly. Every like, year, that's... Okay, twice so, times 200... 525,600 minutes in a year, right? That's the whole point of that song from Rent. Is that how many minutes are in a year? So if you double that... So, wait, That's wait, wait. just over... Oh, boy, we're doing That's bad. just over a million... So yeah, I probably breathed over a billion times actually, because I've lived for longer than one year, and to get okay, so wait, five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes. That's how many seconds? That's how many minutes. That's how many seconds there are in a day. We want we want minutes though. Huh? What? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, okay. five hundred twenty-five. Okay. What? Okay. I don't know what I'm I doing. I wasn't really okay. paying attention to the math because I is didn't that really true? Ah! Is that how many seconds are in a day? What is that? That makes no sense because they said okay. 525,600 so, minutes. 24 hours. Multiply that by 60. So that there's 1,440 minutes in a day. Multiply yeah. that by 60. Again, there's 86,400. No, 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 no. No. You're doing Take, this totally wrong here. I don't know so what I'm what, doing. Okay, how are you starting this? You're I, saying I, there's I'm 24 multi- hours in a day. Yes. 24 times 60. Yeah. So that's how many minutes are in a day. Yeah. But now we want to know how many minutes are in a year. Oh, I was doing how many seconds there are in a day, and then... No. Yeah, but that's not what said, we were talking about. You said once every 30 seconds, so we oh, might yeah. as well do minutes and then multiply that by two. Yeah. yeah. So Okay, so then... And because of the song in Rent, I know that there's 525,600 minutes in a year. That's still not a year. That's still a day's worth. So times three. 65. Technically. Sure, whatever. Technically, if you don't include, but that, but I already know I've breathed over a billion times. No, no, that's a million. Yes, that's but a million that's one in... year, and I've lived for twenty three years. That's almost twenty twenty four. So that's twenty four. So million. you've only done like twenty four million. Right, breaths. I was saying that the next one was <laughs> so a billion point... and not ten million. So, so twenty four point two. So million. I so Roughly. I have to probably have to... live for another over. You have to live way longer than a human life expectancy. I did something wrong. Yeah. 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 So no, no. You, you can't. So twenty four. So twenty four. Twenty times twenty three was twenty four. Twenty four point two million. So even if I live to a hundred, that would still only get me to like two hundred and forty million or two hundred forty two million. Uh, no, a yeah, hundred and some odd. No. Yeah. Million. I don't know because my math is bad. It's because so we're just it's too we're, early. <laughs> we're timesing whatever number you had the twenty four by. F- yeah, it was twenty four point two million. That's not even a hundred million. For me, if I live to 100. Well, probably is 100. But, like, if you times that by 4, so then we'd only roughly, be at, like, 80-something. You'd be at, like, 96.8 million. That yeah. would be... Tw- so, 26. I'd have to 92. live... 92. If so, you lived until 92, it'd be, yeah, about 96. So, I'd have to million. live to probably about 400 before I get to a billion breaths. Something like that, depending on the math. No. No. <laughs> no, yeah. Longer. I'm really bad. If you live to 400, you'd only be... D- yeah. You'd have probably to, to like 4,000. That's probably... 1,000. No. 
No. Closer to like seven. Seven thousand? Our math no. sucks. I don't know. No, My no, math no, no, no. sucks. I don't know. Okay, so you're doing about a million breaths a year. Yeah. My how my math was really so off. So you have to live to be yeah a thousand. A thousand. Pretty old before I get to a billion breaths. So assuming you breathe every thirty seconds, which honestly I think you breathe more than that. I I may breathe more than that because my you nose have I have like a nose thing where I like always more scientifically stuck. break this down for yeah. us. I hope so. I want fan interaction or at least person <laughs> interaction. They don't have to be fans to prove us wrong. Yeah, but that's, that's, they'll <laughs> yeah. do that. And I'd like them tell to be us fans. All Please subscribe. All pretty much idiots. So. Please follow this podcast Please be patient or subscribe with us. We whatever are you're idiots. listening to. Yeah. This is going on as many podcast things as I can find and also YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Hooray, YouTube. We will... We will... I have no idea. I just lost my train of thought. Either way. <laughs> train um, still boarding at the station. So the next thing we have is build a game because we're really bad at coming up with names, so we just took build a bear and replaced it with game. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> so the idea with build a game is every week until we have what we would consider finished, we're not actually making games, we're just coming up with ideas for games. Concepts. Mm-hmm. We're going to fill in blanks in requirements for a game. Mm-hmm. So this week, for instance, this week we're going to start off with genre and setting because we want to lengthen this a little bit. And if and when we finish, we may do other games. We may come up with another thing. We don't know. We'll deal with that when it comes to it because this will probably take us a decent chunk of time. Um, yeah. So, like I said, this week we're doing genre setting. Um, Nick, why didn't you start us off? Okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> so, I'll start off with the setting. So, my setting is futuristic space. I love sci-fi. So, But at the same time, it's also going to have a fantasy element in it. So, it's going to be like... Space elves. What, what I would Sci-fi think of would fantasy? be... I would Sci-fi call fantasy. this science fantasy, just because I really like science. saying that. <laughs> yeah, sci- science fantasy, futuristic, so you have space elves. So, like, high stuff. fantasy science fiction. Is it high fantasy? Is it, like, magic and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. So high, high fantasy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be, like, fantasy, the high fantasy, fiction. high fantasy science fiction. Okay. High science fantasy. Does that include genre, then? Technically, no. well, no. well, you kind you, of, how are you playing it? Oh, the way I'm game. playing it, I guess <laughs> that's going to be game. how would how would the gamers <sighs> play this game? Is it a real time strategy game? Yes, I knew it. With an <laughs> RPG element. With an RPG element. So, so like, okay, sorry, you were going to explain. So it. basically, <laughs> when you go to like uninhabited planets that are with their primal life forms, you go there Is and this it's like you an build. RTS version of No Man's Sky. I've never. Are you going to no promise a lot and then not deliver? No. This is, this is a, no. This is deep cut. Deep no. Cut against <laughs> no. No Man's Sky. I have, I've all. never played No Man's Sky. <laughs> okay. I just know there was, oh, it's there was some yeah, things no, going on. Yeah. Anyway. But no, basically, <laughs> so when, when you go to like plan, it's just to like get like your resource and stuff. You, you start with the whole real-time strategy element. So you're going to build your base, build like your barracks and everything to build up your troops and stuff. And once you're established, you can switch to the RPG element where you take your custom hero and you can walk around. Interesting. So you still have everything like going up around so, you, and you can actually interact with like, so, the buildings and everything. So you go to planets, mm-hmm. and then it's a real time strategy game to inhabit the planet. Yes and no. It, there, it, it, there, there is a whole story. When I, you go I kind to a planet, head, but when you go to a planet, is it against the environment or against another? Um, both invader, both. Because let's face so it. So you can go invader. against you can go against the uh, the planet's inhabitants. Are you a space invader? I'm always a space invader. <laughs> I'm a personal space invader. Calm down, man. No, Just calm down a bit. I got bits. Our uh, recording cut out. Anyways, Nick, where were you uh, left off? At? Uh, so may I ask the question if it's. Something about... I asked environment versus invaders. Yes. So, like, uh, who would you fight when you try to colonize a planet uh, in this real-time strategy portion of the game? There would be a mix of both, depending on what planet you go to. So, there will be, like, okay, there's, like, the uh, indigenous species of the planet 
that you might have to defend against, or maybe you're going to a different planet that's inhabited by pirates because they use it as their base. Or if you decide to go with more like, oh, I'm part of like the, the military for the Empire, maybe you're trying to take over a planet, so there could be a whole other like species there. Like, I don't know, let's just say a bunch of other humans. There, there are hyphens there, you can't see. <laughs> Uh, the common folk, we'll call them that. So the, there's like the common folk, and maybe they have a planet Wait, that's just, colonized. So you said so, this, this is like a like full blown RPG as well. So there's, yeah. I'm guessing there's classes. Yeah, there's going to be so there's going to be factions. So you can be like, uh, let's say, like I said, uh, military, part of like an empire. Uh, pirates, maybe you're part of like a mining group or like a, a guerrilla guerrilla unit that's part of like a rebellion. Maybe some others. Maybe you're part of like a. I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to find the words to put it. Like a, a, uh, pilgrimage group. So you're like a oh, bunch of like. Like a religious faction or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. And you're you're just trying to go and you're trying to. Dispel darkness. <laughs> I was gonna say convert, but that just sounds really uh. Well, I mean, I mean that could work. They could, like, but. Yeah. I mean there there are negative connotations of that, but yeah. I don't think you meant it in that way. No. So. No. Not at Although all. it could you could mean it in that way cuz um, who knows what this religious group is like. Maybe they're maybe depends. they're super aggressive, maybe they're not. It all depends. So, yeah, there'll be the different factions and then you'll have different classes like the traditional like uh D&D classes, so like priest, uh, paladin, warrior, sorcerer, stuff like that. And then in that, you also have the different races. So if you choose, like, an elf race, uh, the, the common folk race, or, like, dwarves or space orcs. Yeah, there, you have, there's, like, an endless possibility. And, like, each, like, race will have its own special abilities. Each uh, class will have their special abilities. And each faction will have special abilities. So, like, let's say go with a dwarf. So a dwarf warrior miner. They'll be good at like the mining, so you'll get like the boost for being a dwarf, for being part of the mining faction. I don't know why I picked warrior, but that just sounded cool. Hammers. Mm -hmm. Proficiency with the hammers and stuff like that. So like it, it has the it has the whole high fantasy element. So like you also get like magic and stuff like that as well. So Yeah. Okay. That's nice. That sounds no, really I, cool. I, I would have definitely play that. Mm -hmm. I don't play too many uh, real-time strategies, but I would definitely try yeah. that one. The main focus would be more so the RPG portion of it, because like the real the RTS side would be okay. You're going to the planet, so you want to just set up the base and get that set, and then so, you can go to the RPG element, which would be uh, we'll say like a third person, like you're walking around. But then as soon as like an, an army's coming to attack your base, you can teleport back to the base because you'll have like a communicator and then you can go into another real time event and be like okay we'll deploy this army here bring these units around and kaboom nice so so uh, I think I'll go next sounds good uh, so for me my setting would be so this is like a, a different like it'd be Steampunk, with the aesthetic of World War Two, and what sort okay. of the setting would be on a sort of alternate planet slash maybe timeline even, and so like this planet, part of sort of the aesthetic is or is like there's gas masks and filters right. that you have to deal with, and part of that will be um, sort of maintaining that because part of the world in general has like toxic gases and stuff like that, and okay. then so. And then, like, the story would be a bit more along the lines of, like, there's two major factions vying for more resources, so... Right. So that would be sort of, like, the, the story and how that plays against each other. Um, then, uh, when it comes to, like, different uh, forms of gameplay, uh, you definitely have, like, ground combat with vehicles... Uh, blimp combat, like or blimp to blimp combat, so or zeppelin to zeppelin combat, with like okay. uh, that kind of thing. It would be first person, uh, sort of first person shooter. Uh, a lot of things like a lot of the weapons would be more 
like steam steam powered or pneumatic. Uh, very few of them would be like fully automatic. Would be more so there'd be a lot more like bolt action than semi automatic weaponry. Okay. So less of the mechanical side of things and like mechanical weapons. Right. There's like yeah, there'd still be mechanical, curve. but like maybe not fully automatic. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely have like flying flying missions, vehicle missions, bigger battle missions. There'd definitely also be a small amount of like character customization and creation at the beginning. Right. Uh, and also um, there'd be like story choices as well. Maybe not to the extent of like like a Bioware game, but definitely but, okay. definitely enough to have multiple endings kind of thing. Right. So but, more of like. Far Cry, where it's like, okay, like, uh, when it came to, like, the ending, it's like, okay, you could, there's different... More, more than Far Cry, at least okay. what I'm thinking of, more right. than Far Cry. Okay. Matt, what about you? My game is Frustration, and my setting is right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had problems with recording because I fidget, and I pulled the microphone out twice, so, <laughs> this is the third time we've recorded this. I'm just going to be straight up with you guys. I'm very frustrated with myself. I'm not talking a lot right now because I'm going to scream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, my game... I was paying attention to Trenton's game. I do think it's a really cool idea, and I do think Nick's idea is awesome as well. I'm just... Oof. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my game is a high fantasy RPG. Uh, pirate themed. <laughs> That's really all I got. I did not have nearly as much in-depth as the other guys. <clears throat> um, definitely a lot of character customization. Because that's what I need to have fun also. I just like switched sentences in the middle of that. That felt very kind of strange. Did. That felt very strange. Yeah, um, that was a little, a little funny. <laughs> I I just really like character customization. I have trouble playing games that don't let me customize my character at all. Um, so that would be definitely high on the list of needs in this game. Um, high fantasy pirates. So it's you know a pirate game with lots of magic and stuff like that and your ships depending on like races would be made out of different materials possibly that we were talking about this in the other attempt at recording this before i messed it up again don't come near me I'm so frustrated <laughs> so like another thing you, um, you said uh, if i recall is like you'd start kind of as a, a just like a crew member on one of one yeah of the, one of the pirate ships and yeah, and, and there'd be different ways of progressing. Um, if you wanted to become the captain or a captain, because there you could, you know, convince the other crew members to help mutiny the captain, or you could get in the captain's good graces so that you are, like, first mate or something, and then maybe he gets killed in battle, or maybe you kill him secretly. <laughs> or, and then you get his job because you were the highest-ranking uh, crew member. Or you could, you know, maybe in some of the more aggressive races or something like that, you could challenge him to a fight. So as, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing I'm just making high-fantasy Star Trek. Like, <laughs> High well, well, you're not. You don't. You, you could don't challenge any... to be captain. That's one hundred percent a Klingon thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but if you think about it, that's also like an orc thing too. If you if you played a was it like Shadow of Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War? Mm, I haven't, but I yeah. I've seen some stuff. Yeah, from... you when you when you take control <laughs> of the orcs, things. you can make them challenge, and then mm -hmm. yeah, I think okay. if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I played it. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, stuff like that, and that would be, you know, super interesting for me personally. But also, you, uh, you said there's like there's a very uh, story. It's very story driven. Yeah, the game is very story driven because when I'm just kind of left to do whatever I want, 
like you can kind of do whatever you want. It's definitely meant to be like an open world game, right? But with a little bit more direction, because <laughs> when I'm just left to do my own thing, and I have no direction, I kind of don't do anything. I just kind of wander around for about an hour, and then I'm just like, okay, I'm done. I don't know what I'm doing, and then I tend to shut the game off and go to another game. So, definitely a game where you always, not always, but a lot of the time, the majority of the time, have a goal to get to. Right. Like, an immediate goal, not, like, at the beginning of the game. Obviously, your goal is to get higher in rank. But that's, like, I wouldn't call that the end goal, but that's a longer-term goal. If that's just something that's just, like, do this, then... Like, this is your goal, get there however you want. That's something that I have a bit more trouble with. I want a few more options and, like, rules, but I don't want... See, it's harder for me because I don't like being railroaded, but I also really appreciate being railroaded. So, like... <laughs> a railroad with, your, like, you want four your, or more different tracks to take. You want right, your, that op- I can your options to be very, very present. Right. Yes. Yeah. You don't. You don't like the the hidden. Quests I don't like vague options or the vague options, right. like the hidden quest that it's like if you go here and you do these three things, then you get this long quest that has a really good story. You're like, I well, might not first ever. You catch have to that. figure out how to do the yeah thing and to get was, the quest. Yeah. Okay. So I, I so sort of more present. Maybe you'll have a lot more like story like like story focused side quests that you that are available as well. Or do you like the single story to be the most? Or the biggest part of it. I, mm. I don't know how to say this. I don't know if I had my question that was that good either. It was a good question. I just... Haven't thought about it yet? I didn't really think about that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, like, well, again, maybe you guys can... put much more thought into this than I did. <laughs> a lot of it was on the spot, though. To be fair. Yeah, but you're better at coming up with things on the spot, I think. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we can answer some of these stuff, like, the next time we come back to it. Yeah, this is... Session. The plan is definitely for this to be an ongoing thing. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. This, this, it's yeah, definitely going to take quite a few episodes to get through this. Yeah, and once we find a rhythm and I... I probably have to get, like, a fidget toy or something like that just to not fidget with the cable I think our next next section is news yeah and that's hosted by me Trenton Trenton anyways uh, so it's gonna be pretty casual news stuff kind of what's been happening throughout the week and so this will be this could be slightly dated uh, information just to let you know uh but we're just going to talk about it. I'm going to bring up some stuff. We might talk about one topic for a long time. We might talk about a couple for you know, a little bit longer. Uh, so uh, this week, um, <clears throat> there there have been a few things, one of which uh, the developers, CD Projekt Red, for um, the developers for Cyberpunk 2077, announced that they are going to be present at E3 which I'm super, super excited about. It's something that, it's one of their next biggest games that they're making, next big game, English. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's really exciting, although they did release a video later this week that says they're still, they still have, they're still really working hard on it and have no release date they want to even come up with or talk about. So that's one of the things that was pretty pretty interesting hearing about this week uh another smaller thing uh anthem uh is apparently crashing for ps4 owners and some (laughs) of the other owner platform owners as well so that's a kind of a thing to watch out because apparently it can just like really might might even brick your console which is not good uh bioware has said they're gonna fix that uh problem next week at least of this recording just dropped my phone. Has there been any uh, news about what will happen with the brick consoles? Like, will you, will Bioware they said replace them or? Um, like, well, I'm not sure if it's so obviously if they're them. under warranty, you can send them in, yeah, and yeah that's get true. them fixed. But like the ones that are, aren't under warranty, are you just stuck with? I don't think it's necessarily a, like a new doorstop, or I don't necessarily <laughs> think it's like brick. I don't. 
I might have said this wrong by using the word brick. I think I think it, what it does, it does sh- sort of like like freeze it, and you'd have to like power like, it off and turn it on again, like a hard reset. Yeah, have to yeah hard yeah. reset, and that's okay. one of the things that uh, Bioware has suggested. People are kind of afraid of that though, because it can corrupt oh, yeah. so- save files. So yeah. if you have <laughs> yeah. that problem, please be careful. Other than that, like, maybe wait a little while before playing Anthem again. Wait until yeah. the update comes out. That's that's yeah. kind of what I'm doing. I haven't played Anthem in a couple days. Same. Yeah. So that that that's one. But thing. also, we tend to buy a lot of new games, so it doesn't really bother us as yeah. much. You guys buy a lot of new games. I, I don't buy as many I, new games. Well, when I say new games, I mean new to me. New to you, okay? Because <laughs> I, I definitely I'm... just bought Soul Calibur Six, and <laughs> that's not a new game. It's kind of October. And then uh, the one one piece of uh, news that. I want to talk about more in depth uh, is that there's rumors going around uh, that Microsoft's next console <laughs> will not have a disk drive in it. So it'll just be the capability of Wi Fi and a hard drive. So, my, my question is to you guys what do you think of a future of consoles without disk drives in them? Are you guys still oh. a big fan of? physical media or are you like ready to jump ship to the all digital um i own almost 300 games on xbox i have three on disc so i'm all in for purely digital consoles and it's like the same thing with my playstation 4 i have i have less games on there because i've had it for less time i have like 80 something games two of them are on disc so in my probably Roughly, you know, 380 games, five are on disc. So I'm I'm pretty good on digital. I don't, I'm not one who needs discs purely for the reason that if I have to install a game and it takes just as much space from a disc as it would digitally, mm-hmm. I don't see the point. Like with the Switch that I, well, I don't actually have a Switch anymore because... I'm insane, and I traded it in. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to ha- question that decision, but that's your decision. It's we'll my leave decision. It, I, leave it at that. They, it they'll... didn't have enough games for me to want to keep it okay. at that point. The games that it did have, fun, aren't necessarily my type of games. Okay. The games that I bought anyway. Maybe there were better games that I just didn't buy. But the Switch being a game console that you have your, well, game cards... Yeah, and you don't have to install them on the disk drive so that, you know, that saves space. That I'm all for buying cartridges, game cards, whatever you want to well, call them. The Switch also had a very limited hard drive. On, on it's space. not that big. Like, yes, they gave you a mm. port to put in a, uh, an yeah. SD card, but it's, at the same time, it's like, uh, do I want to? But that I think that was Nintendo's failing there. I think they could have put in a bigger hard drive, couldn't they have? Or was there... <laughs> Like, was there actually a reason? Because I feel like they always do that. Like, it was the same thing when I had a 3DS. It was... They probably could have Their, their games aren't that big, space. though. That's the thing. Because, like... No, but it's what? Like, a 12 gig... I think it's 8 gigs, actually, the hard drive they give you. On the Switch? It's, I thought it was bigger. It's tiny. Yeah, I, cu- they, I couldn't they, install more than, like, two of my games. They could have definitely increased the size, because phones usually have options of, like, 100. Yeah, like, my phone is... I think my phone's... 100 gigabytes or 128 or something like that. Yeah, so there's options like that. It's 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 more yeah. of Nintendo. And it's not like the Switch is it... too small to have a hard drive because may, maybe I don't know. I'm not a technical person like that. So Switch has a 32 gigabyte internal memory. Okay, so that's but then the 32. still 32. Yeah. But the port that you can put the the uh, uh-huh. SD card in can support up to two terabytes. Yeah. So, so you do have to buy another uh, memory. But still, a memory expander. But that's Nintendo the same thing with the Xbox big. One. Oh, the, the original the, one, yeah. No, I have. I still have the original Xbox One, and it only came with a 500 gig hard drive. But that's also because you have to download the whole game onto it. Yeah. If you had yeah. a 500 gigabyte Xbox 360 and you had lots of discs, you're fine. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, is because the discs on the Xbox 360 and the cartridges in the Switch, yeah. you don't have to install from them. Yeah. Then go for it. Get as many discs and cartridges as you want. But because you're limited in your... Not limited, but because you have to install from a disc on Xbox One... Regardless of... 
regardless of digital or disc. Yeah. Yeah. Then I don't see the point of discs because it just means you have to stand up and switch disc. And yeah, I realize that's a very first world thing to say. It's like, <laughs> oh no, I have to stand up and walk two feet to switch my discs. But like, there's no benefit to it. It's yeah. only the tiniest of hassles, but it's still a hassle. I don't actually know. I, I wouldn't consider it a hassle. It's just not yeah. something that I'm like, I don't really... Because It's the same I mean, size no matter what. So yeah. I'd rather get digital. See, and for me, so, I, yeah, Nick, I have a huge <laughs> disc collection. Like, I'm going to... Like, okay, so my Xbox... The games I can play on my Xbox One, so that's Xbox One games, backwards compatible... That library is over 360 games. I'm going to say about 280 of those are on disc. Because I have a huge disc collection. I, I like the look of it, which is the reason why I have them. You're doing it for aesthetics. And I'm, I mean... I can, I can get yeah. behind that. Originally, <laughs> though, originally, though, with the 360 games, it was because... I had very limited hard drive space. Cause yeah, was, and that's saving space on your hard drive. On my hard drive, which yeah. Which makes sense. And then when the Xbox One came out, it's like, okay, there was no backwards compatibility yet. They're like, okay, just Xbox One games. So I was like, okay, that's fine. But now that they have backwards compatibility, it's like, oh, install the whole game because it's not actually playing from disc. Mm-hmm. The disc is just like, okay, you can do- technically download this for free and play it. And play it. The as disc long as is the disc essentially... Game. A key code. Yeah. It, it's... It's your permission slip to play the game. Yeah. If you have it on disc. That's all the disc is at this point yeah. once you install it. I mean, it looks good as a collection. <laughs> it does look good. Like, I'll give you that. I'm, I'm 100% okay with that. Yeah. Like, that's your reasoning and that's fine. Yeah. And whatever reason you have, really, for disc versus digital, I don't... Nothing that bothers me. Because yeah. it's not... You're not cluttering up my room with your game collection. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. So yeah, eventually your room will be full, and you'll have to move to the next room also, over. But also with the whole like digital versus disc games, like <coughs> when it comes to pre-ordering, <coughs> as well, because like I, I pre-order my games, and they're all disc. I know when you pre-order digital, like off the Xbox, where you don't get like the pre-order bonuses, like the solid ones. So, like when I pre-ordered uh, Black Ops Four, so I got that one on disc. I also got a Black Ops Four flask, or what, what was another one? Yeah, uh, and that means you have a problem. It came for free. It's just like, oh, it's the same with the Naruto to Burudo Shinobi I don't know, Striker. I don't know if that like, uh, would be considered who? free. Anyways. Burudo's dad versus Burudo? What? No, Naru, 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 Naruto oh, to goodness. Burudo Shinobi Striker. <laughs> yes. When I pre-ordered that disc, I also got a free pair of Shinobi Striker socks. I don't know. I I mean, that's pretty cool. I do, I, I can see that with the pre-order bonuses and the, like, yeah. the, the deluxe edition, whatever, ultimate edition with the physical <laughs> things that you can get, like the statuettes, yeah. like that's that's I I do agree that's cool. Mm-hmm. I'm not someone who needs a lot of like video game statuettes and stuff like that. I'm not a collector like that, so that <laughs> that doesn't bother me. Yeah. But obviously, if you are, then go for it. That's, that's not yeah. an issue. But I don't. I'm not as yeah invested. So yeah, uh, when it comes to In digital versus that, uh, yeah. physical. Uh, no, actually, I'm digital. He's physical. I'm, well, I, it's a very good. It depends on the console. <laughs> it depends on the console. That's true. I, d- I did say with the Switch and like the older games where you didn't have to install. In, yeah. in this in this new scenario, it is in the Xbox. So I guess if that changes your perspective, yeah. then go well, yeah. If, it, if it's like Microsoft or Sony, they're gonna probably continue with the installing things from another, discs. So. Yeah. Another thing yeah. with with Unless, this course, console, with if it comes out and it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have that hardware in it it's gonna be a lot smaller and a lot cheaper like oh, by 100 true. bucks because those yeah. things those things appa- apparently like, well it's, it's a blu-ray cheap. reader well, i don't know if it'd be 100 bucks cheaper oh, oh it'd be, it'd it be a be. lot it's it's not the thing itself yeah, but you're also paying for the actual console and they'd probably bump it up because they can it's not mm. well i'm just saying think of it this way the and we'll buy it the, because uh, we want it not only the the the, the, the disc player cost that much but the actual body itself can be smaller which is the yeah. less resources yeah so they could save a lot they also wouldn't they, need as many fans in it too because they could to cool down the but also drive. if they charge the same amount for this new console that they did for like the xbox one when it first came out that means they're making more profit which means they might go for that maybe not maybe okay. they may not want to alienate their fans uh, like that i'm not saying they will i'm saying it's a possibility okay here's another uh 
bit more of the news that I... I'm I the anarchist at, of the group. <laughs> when, when I was reading... As you could tell, buddy, pulling the cable out. When like was, this. When I was looking more into like, the info, uh, the speculation is that it's their their slim variant, their S variant, is yeah, going to be getting this upgrade. Yeah. And the hardware in that might not get too much of an upgrade, so by now, to produce it, it would be mm. a lot cheaper. Well, And then they can yeah. put it at a cheaper price and still make mo- lots of money. And, yeah, that's true. Like, they might only put, like a, like, a cooling upgrade for it, so at least it's, like, smoother running in comparison to the S, but not much yeah. of a power increase. So if they can do that, they can t- totally sell this at like 250 and well, yeah, still make lots what? of money on it, on each console sold. Um, yeah. Anyways, mm-hmm. going back to whether or not I like digital or physical, I'm oh, yeah, definitely... Yeah, right. yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm... It was just me and Nick have had this conversation so many times, so we just were like, oh, this is a debate between us. All. <laughs> I, but yeah, I'd like to hear for, your for thoughts. Me, for me, it's definitely leading way more to digital than physical. The yeah. last few games I've bought were all were mainly digital. I don't... Also, you don't have to leave the house. You don't have to put pants on. That's a great I don't have to put pants on to get my games. They get delivered to my house. They get delivered. I've never pre-ordered a game physically. I've only... (laughs) I've I've pre-ordered a few for you. Another thing about... Yeah, but then you give them to me. It's not... No, I I just get them sent to your house. (laughs) Do you? I don't remember that. Okay, guys. What games are that? Never mind. Sorry. (laughs) Another thing about about digital... (laughs) Another thing about digital uh, is... That if you do pre-order it, uh, most of the time you can start downloading it before. Yeah, you before can, the game yeah, actually launches, true. and then when it does launch, you are starting to pl- you start to play right away. Yeah, and that's the yeah, one thing I, that I get to start games. Don't have at 10 p.m. the night before on Xbox anyway. Yeah, when I pre-order them digitally, <sighs> whereas yeah. when you pre-order them. Physical. Physically, you might not even get them until a couple days after. Like, well, it, it you, depends. You, you've had that problem a few times. I'm not saying every oh, time no. you get them delivered. Late. Sometimes you get them on time. There but then you still have to wait for them to beforehand. install. So. Two days? Oh, wow. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, they sent it to me two days before the game's official release. Like, oh, the wow. official midnight release. So that Which means you had the time to... Okay. I installed it, and, and I then, played it in advance. And then you could play it Cause there's no, at 10 p.m. the night before? Or no, you could, I could or play you didn't even have that done. restriction? Because oh, there's, okay. no, there's no online multiplayer, so they didn't have to do anything. It's just, oh, okay. it's just the game. So... Yeah. Okay, that's that's fair. Personally, for me, I, I don't really pre-order many games anymore. I'm just that's I'm more cautious. I'm more cautious person. Yeah. See, we I both wait. have Anthem, and we can't play it right now. So <laughs> you're clearly, I don't have. You're Anthem. clearly the smart one. <laughs> I don't have Anthem because I don't want to struggle one. with those problems oh. with pre-ordering games that quickly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, that was basically what I th- uh, thought I would bring for for news wise, mm-hmm. and we, our discussion around that. So we mm-hmm. got some good discussion around physical versus digital. Well, we got some discussion. I don't know if it was good. <laughs> I thought it was good. You guys were great. I was just angry. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm terrible when it comes to pre-ordering games. I don't games. know why I said angry. I'm, I'm waiting for Division 2 right now. <laughs> I, I consider pre-ordering Division 2, but I'm like, I, yeah, no. I don't know if I can necessarily afford it right now, but also at the same time, the pre-order bonus is like, what? It's like one set of clothes and like a gun? You get pre- Yeah, you get the pre-order There's not, outfit, and you get it's not a really, mission, if I remember oh. correctly. I for, the, for the base edition. For me, personally, it's not as... Important. Yeah. It's not enough of an incentive to pre-order it when I'm not doing amazing financially. Yeah. <laughs> Although, that being said, I did buy Soul Calibur 6 yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be kind of busy but I found it the used, last so little cheaper. bit of this month, so I wouldn't get much time playing this game, this new game anyways, Division 2. I yeah. wouldn't get much time, mm-hmm. so that's why I didn't pre-order it or buy, think to buy it. I'm going to basically wait until after this month, and then I can see reactions of people who either have found problems or don't have problems or see how the end game is. And this is who Trenton is. He's definitely a researcher when it comes to games. And And I buy Division 2 purely for the end game, not so much the story. Let's face it, the games that he's researched versus the games he's got because me and Nick have had them, he's liked way more. Most of the games that we get, all three of us, he trades in. Because he just doesn't oh, not find every them. Time. Oh, come he on. doesn't. I, I didn't say every time. I said most of the time, not which even. you have to guarantee. Most of the time, not even. If we get it physically, most of the time you would trade it in. If it's digitally, you keep it. You don't care. Division, <laughs> the first one. That's Division. like the only one I've traded in. Mass Effect Andromeda. That one too. <laughs> I was gonna say. For how many, how many other physical games have we all gotten? 
Most of them are digital. We have, we have, we have uh, I have, as a physical one that I still have is, uh, for Xbox is Overwatch. I haven't traded that one in yet. I did. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> but to be fair, I have it on PlayStation, and I play it much more on PlayStation than I did on Xbox. I have it on PC, I think. Do we I all have our different consoles. I don't know. <laughs> that's amazing. Anyways. Okay. okay that but so that's all news. Um... That's the news. No. What's the next? What's our next? Uh... That's the news. Ba da ba. I thought you were gonna go for a different jingle. Then I'm no. like, no, <laughs> copyright. Oh, I think I know what you were talking. Anyways, I, I don't, but that's okay. You Golden can arches. Explain it to me. Actually, that's that makes sense. <clears throat> I'm loving it. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I can just cut that part out. I, that's why I waited a second before <laughs> saying it because it's much easier to cut out. Anyway. Anyways. Um. Okay. So. Well, it's Fave of. So, so Fave of is pretty obvious what it is. It's our favorite of this specific... Blank subject. Blank, yeah. This, this week we're going real insane and saying video game of all time. No! What is our favorite video game of all time? Oh my gosh. Um, Trenton, do you want to start us off? Sure, I, I will just start. Because okay, I'm trying I'll, to I'll just alternate I'll just who the, starts on anything. Oh I'll gosh. just put this forward, probably for everyone, mainly Nick and myself. But this, this it's is such hard, a hard question. It's I know I'm 100 percent with you. It's a lot easier for me. I know, but I realize it would it's be a hard easier question. if you said which like. Wait, didn't we? We had a different way of saying this, didn't we? What? Yeah, it was favorite. Uh, it's fave of. So it's our favorite video game of all time. But we with this one, we have a qualifier. We just have to say one of our favorite. So it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to be like, oh, quantify this one more than this one. Okay, so I like this okay, one. That, it's just, what's, that makes what, I guess it's kind of your favorite at the moment. I, uh, but I like something that, that you've, oh, favorite that's thing. been your favorite a number know. of times. Okay. For, so for me, at the moment, my favorite game of all time, or one of those, yeah. would be <laughs> uh, God of War 4. Ooh. Unbelievably good story. I love that story so much, um, and I love the gameplay from that game. It was fantastic. Which one's God of War four? Boy, it, boy, where all those is boys. that? That's God that's, of War. That's the newest one. The yeah. newest one. Okay. God of War. It's the only one that's. On. It's just is not it called God of War four. That's why it confused. It's just called God of War. It's just called God of War. Oh, of War. But one. that would confuse yeah. if it's the fourth one in the series because it's, it's not a reboot one. or yeah. a remastered or anything. It's. I it's own it, so, and I still don't so understand the, the God of War thing. I, I, I love the story. <laughs> the characters are amazing. Boy. When's God of War the pre-sequel coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I think it already did on the PSP. Oh, boy. I'm not even kidding. I, yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, this was like my first God of War game. I haven't played any of the other ones. And yeah, I me really, neither. really, really enjoyed this one. Like, unbelievably good. Uh, I would highly recommend. If you love story... Which like I do. At any Same. level, you should be playing this at least once. And it's pure single player, right? It's pure single player. There's no microtransactions. Uh, there's no DLC that you need to purchase yet. It's all no. Oh, no, no, actually, they're not. They're not planning that. Yay! All only thing they updated post uh, post launch was to add a uh, new game, game plus. new game plus. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like a free thing. That was all free. Yeah. So yeah, that the. Uh, I'm really excited for the next one, but that's mine. I need mine. to get a PlayStation now. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Wait, so was this, like, favorite game of all time or just current? One, one of it, your favorite. It's favorite. kind of a mixture of both. Oh, okay. If, if it's also currently your favorite game, but, like, one of your top games of all time. Okay, Matt, you go next. You want me to go next? Okay. Yeah, you go next, because um, I'm, I'm... Something I you'll hear me this. talk about a lot, because it is... I would say my favorite game of all time, it's a relatively easy thing for me, is Dragon Age Inquisition. I love the Dragon Age series so much. When I first played Origins, (laughs) I'm pretty sure I told you guys this before. You told me this (laughs) when you still played it on the 360. Oh, so good. It's my favorite game of all time, definitely. Um, Story is so good. It has, I wouldn't say the deepest character customization, but a pretty... But really good character customization. Better um, than two, right? Oh, way better than two. <laughs> I love I, I all know. the Dragon Age games. Dragon Age Inquisition, top favorite game of all time. Guaranteed. Uh, that may change at some point, 
probably when the next Dragon Age comes out. In but like, maybe not. In like six years? I can wait that long. I have Dragon Age Inquisition. I can just play it like 17 more times. Um, <laughs> but everything that they did in Dragon Age Inquisition was an improvement on Dragon Age 2. There were a few things that they didn't do from Dragon Age 1 that they changed that I'm not necessarily the happiest with, but overall, I do think Dragon Age Inquisition is a better game than Origins. I think the story feels tighter to me, and there's various things that happen that, you know, are all over the place, and I just love the game so much. And it's... I I also like it because it's um, open region... I guess I would say it's not open world because, you know, you travel between different places. It's not like Skyrim yeah. where you can walk from one end to the other. Oh. I do like Skyrim. I'm not, not. Yeah, I can't say But anything. there's different regions that you can go to, and that makes it a little bit more manageable rather than, like, suddenly, here you are, here's this world to explore, have fun. It's, here's a region to explore, and you can unlock n- new regions as you progress through the story. And, yeah, so, that's my favorite game of all time. Dragon Age Inquisition. I can't give an opinion on it because I've only played the multiplayer once for 30 minutes. And I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the multiplayer. It's fine, but <laughs> it's a very different experience than the actual game. Yeah. I can't comment either. I'm, I haven't played any of the Dragon Age games. Actually. I, I recommend them. I, I, I recommend all three of them, actually. If, if I had time, I but would definitely you... <laughs> play all three of them. I but if you have to limit yourself... Please subscribe to the Inquisition, podcast. Inquisition, Origins... <laughs> Two. <laughs> we have to play them in order. Come on. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just okay. saying you. If you have to limit yourself to one of the three games, it's Inquisition. If you have to limit yourself to two of the three games, it's Origins and Inquisition. And then, if you have a time for all three games, add number two. Yeah. Obviously, play them in order. <laughs> and Dragon Age Keep is super useful if you only have time for one of them, or two of them. Okay, Nick. Let you make all the decisions. Nick, it's your time to make a decision. I honestly don't know. Like. I'm stuck between two games. Okay. What are those two games? So the two one's games... a rock and one's a hard place. Ha 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 No. Uh, so the two games I'm stuck between What's is... What's so funny? <laughs> is uh, Pokemon Soul Silver. Ooh. Oh, I love that I, one. I should have known he would choose a Pokemon game. And... I should have known that. The other one is Legend <laughs> of Zelda Wind Waker. Not, not, not the remake. Okay. The original one on the GameCube. Huh. He doesn't like remakes... He thinks no, I just don't like the I don't Wii U know. that much. I have one, but <laughs> I don't like the remakes on them. Okay. I don't like That's motion fair. controls. So So I'm I'm stuck between those two because like Well then we'll yeah. choose one of them okay. for you and you go into depth. For okay. That one. I think because I chose an RPG and Wind Waker is an RPG. So, so is, is Pokemon. Pokemon. So I don't know how to do it. I was trying to <laughs> narrow it down. It didn't work. Well, um I feel like Pokemon is a lot more different though. It's a lot more me though. Because I mean, Pokemon both is very you in my mind, but Pokemon but is definitely my top. War. We all chose RPGs. Yeah, we like RPGs. It's RPGs are the mind. best. Um, I'll go. With, I'll go with Pokemon. Soul I, w- I would say Pokemon just because that's what I would expect from you. Because Pokemon is my but biggest. But I also, biggest I also, world. Legend of Zelda didn't surprise me. It's but like I did expect more about Pokemon. Yeah, it's number seven on your list. It can't be your favorite of all time then. No, but like, <laughs> no, like in franchises, Legend of Zelda is number seven on my list of favorite oh, franchises. Oh, and then but Wind individual Waker games is okay. in my top yep. three. Okay, that makes sense. So, okay, explain to us why Pokemon Soul, Soul Silver. Silver. Soul Silver. Go. Oh boy, okay, is one of your top favorite games. So, Pokemon Soul so 30 Silver. Seconds, go. Wow, I can't. I'm kidding. Do this. I can't do that. We seconds. didn't limit ourselves, so, so why would we limit you? So, Pokemon Soul Silver that came out with Gen Four of Pokemon. So that was the first generation of Pokemon games on the Nintendo DS. Is that the one that is Murkrow? Murkrow came out on Game Boy Color. Really? I don't know anything about Gen Pokemon. Two. The, so, Pokemon Soul Silver and Heart Gold. So those two are kind of interchangeable. <coughs> I I prefer Soul Silver because of Lugia. Uh, anyway, so those were the remakes. I got a Hakalugia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Soul Silver was the remake of Pokemon Silver Check on the Game Boy Color. Tons of steel. Really? <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Just let him. <laughs> so sorry. I know I said I don't like remakes, but like this one was great because it was on the DS. The DS when they put Pokemon on the DS, that's when they. But it wasn't on Wii U, so it's fine. Yeah. Because that was but, what you said. You specifically don't like remakes on the Wii U. Yeah. 
I'm having an actual conversation. No, he is right. (laughs) But, like, the thing is, is, like, I, when they brought Pokemon onto the DS, that's when more of the competitive battling was able to happen. Because, like, like, it didn't really happen. Multiplayer? Like, the, the like tournaments. Like, stuff, against like, other actual players? Yeah. Like, you, you could do, do that all the time? You could do it all the time, but at that point, it's like, oh, oh link tables. Tournaments. And, like, and tournaments were a lot easier. So, wireless and tournaments. Yeah. Okay. Now, this one was the remake of the one from... Of Silver. Of Pokemon Silver. So, you got to revisit the Johto region, which, honestly, is so beautiful. The is that, story... that your favorite region? No. It is not, actually. Ooh. It doesn't have to be your favorite yeah, region. My, my, favorite favorite region <laughs> my favorite region is the Hoenn region, so Gen 3. Okay. But I'll get into that later. But, <laughs> you anyway, know way more about I, Pokemon than me, so... I have I have Bulbapedia on my phone. My wallet is Charizard. My belt is Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. I don't have a Pokemon He's tattoo yet. He's also not wearing pants. It's very strange. I'm wearing a Hershey Kisses butt. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so because it was a remake, they brought back that whole story, and I love the story. And it was, I think it was a <coughs> ten, 10 year gap, if I remember correctly, between Gen 2, like from the original Silver to Soul Silver. So, like in real life, it was a gap from when they made them. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. It's the same game. So, like, you go, you start in the Johto region, but... It's just, like, a graphical upgrade? Or where there's, like, gameplay upgrades? Gameplay up. So, they upgraded the gameplay, so they added in a bunch. They uh, I forgot. There was a story they added after you beat the game. So, Interesting. So, we'll put it this way. So, you start in the Johto region. You go through that. You beat the eight gyms. Then you beat the Elite Four. Cool. But afterwards, you get to go back to the Kanto region, which is the original Pokemon region. From the very from first games. Pokemon Red, Red Blue, Blue and Yellow. Red, Blue, Yellow, Green, and then Fire, Red, green? and Leaf, Green. Yeah. What? Green was Japan only. I guess Blue, what? I'm, Red I'm and Blue were the original green. ones, but I mean, in Japan it was Blue and Green. Interesting. And then they released Pokemon Yellow later, which is where you got Pikachu. Anyways, Pikachu. so. There's, there's a lot. I, even there's I don't know this as well as I should. Yeah. <laughs> and you're Japanese. No, I'm not Japanese. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> That's going to be so confusing. He grew yeah. up in Japan, but he's not Japanese. Continue, yeah. please. Anyway, so, <laughs> so after you beat the Elite Four for the Johto region, you get to go to the Kanto region, beat those eight, then you go to Mount Silver, and you can battle Red, who is the... Uh, I the original, the original protagonist. Protagonist from... The... So if you, read, if you read the manga, Wait, he's... Wait, if you play, you play Pokemon Sol- Blue, you're, you, play you still as, play as Red? You, you play as Red. Okay. Blue is your rival. In, even if you okay yeah that's their choice so when you <laughs> so in Pokemon Soul Silver you play as gold and then your, ri- your rival <laughs> oh but I guess it's the same thing as playing yeah. as red in Pokemon Blue yeah. like, your okay. rival is silver and he's the son of the leader of Team Rocket and blah blah it's only if you play as the male the that female is, is Lydia no because that's Wait, the blue the blue the blue's name is silver the boy's name is silver but the girl's name is Lydia the boy's name is blue no, the, the boy's name so, is Gold, but the girl's name is Lydia. Yeah, because they because in the original ones, so and then Gold the, and Silver and Crystal, that you couldn't pick to be a female until Gen Three. So for the original ones, you really? couldn't be female. Yeah. No. Yeah. When did Fire Red come out? Gen Three. That's okay. what I'm saying. Gen Three is when okay. they introduced that. So because I have Fire Red, I'm like I definitely yeah, yeah I know I gave it to you yeah but <laughs> or my brother Fire Red too. is Gen Three a. It's a, I thought it was a remake of Red. Yeah, it's a remake of Red. But it came With, out... It but, came out before Soul Silver, Which is Gen 4. Yeah. So Pokemon Fire Red is a remake of Pokemon, Pokemon Red. Red. Yes. But with all up to Gen 3? All up to Gen 3 Pokemon, yes. Okay, so, but that, so it came out after the yeah. Gen... Th- okay. So they updated the graphics and everything. They added a few more stories. I thought stuff, it was just a remake. Which is the same thing I like about Soul Silver. Mm. So, yeah, so you got all Soul that. So Silver did that come out after, like... Soul Silver Gen came out in 2010, I believe. Well, when did Gen 5 or 6? Gen 5 came out in 2012. Okay, so... Wait. So, Silver is Gen 4. Soul Silver is Gen 4. Oh, and Silver, Silver is Gen, Gen 2. 2. Okay. So, that, so yeah. <laughs> so, going back to why this is my favorite. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, DS, you got the... Du- Touchscreen updated graphics. You got all the Pokemon, so you got you get basically Pokemon one to four hundred ninety three. Great. At the same time, you also got the Poke Radar, which is like a pedometer that you could connect to your game and you could walk around with your Pokemon, and you get steps. So that and was that fun. Helps them like level up or something like that. Uh, a little bit, but it also helps you like catch Pokemon stuff and get mm-hmm. items. I used it for a little bit, and then afterwards, I was just like, now I'm done because I wasn't walking around. That was at like all. their 
a precursor to Pokemon Go, basically. So I liked it, and then I'm just trying to remember everything else because it's been a while since I played it. So I, I definitely hacked that game. You hacked that hacked game? Hacked that game? I hacked the game, yeah. Like with, a, with, a, with a knife? No, uh, hacked an action app. replay. So I got game codes that changed my game. Oh. So I was able to get like event oh. Pokemon that activated the events in the game. Oh. But like these are like legit events. So I I hacked the game to get uh, a Japanese Arceus through at least of the movie. Did you just admit on the internet to cheating? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> just making sure. I, I have, I think, 22 of Pokemon boys. So <laughs> anyway, so like it, it was great. I love the story and you get all the cool Pokemon and like. I don't know, it was just on the DS, so it was fun. Mm -hmm. So you could literally take it around anywhere and say, oh, you want to battle someone? Just pull out, and then you can just play. You don't have to You don't have to take a link cable and plug it in and plug mm -hmm. into the other one. It's, like, it's right the there. The wireless. The wireless. Um, <coughs> convenience of wireless is just... Yeah, and that's what I loved about <coughs> it. Because I, I, I didn't like Gen 5. I'm just going to say that right now. Gen 5, I did not like. Well, you didn't so. like... I was going to try and name a Pokemon from Gen 5, but I don't know any. Well, I'm sure I know some, but I don't know they're Gen 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, Soul Silver is great because that's that's the first Zigzagoon, Gen Three. Dang it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Soul Silver I like because that was it was revolutionary to Pokemon, mm -hmm. and that was also like the first like Pokemon game where I could actually trade with someone in Taiwan if I wanted to. Like it was great. And, you could and he does. He does most days want to trade with someone in Taiwan. I've traded with a guy in Germany. That's not Taiwan. I've traded with pe like multiple people in Japan. I think I have one Taiwanese Pokemon right now in my current Pokemon game. So, I, I do they keep lot. like their names from that language? Yes, that's really cool. Unless you evolve it, oh. then they lose it. That's a little disappointing, but it also makes it easier for you to know what you're doing. Oh, I know the Pokemon Possibly. just by looking at them. So, like Zigzagoon. Okay. I don't know why that's the one I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so yeah, Pokemon Soul Silver is definitely okay. there. So, Anyways, yeah, those, that, are, those are our, our, our favorite of the time, of slash one of those, those. One of our top yeah, games yeah, each. Yeah. My, my personal fave of all time, one of their each, because it's a definitely a difficult question. It it's is. like asking what's your favorite band. That one I can't answer.